We play and call it work. Hey folks, Janine from Mini Wargaming here with another how-to video for you. In this video, we're going to finish up the Saint Celestine Mini and we're going to work on her hair. As always, if you have suggestions for something you'd like to see in a future how-to video, please leave it down below in the comments. Now for this particular Saint Celestine, we want to paint her hair to be a light red color. We're going to start by using the color Dumbo Brown. We're going to mix it with a little bit of Lamian Medium. And we want to apply this as an all over layer on all of her hair. The way that St. Celestine sculpted, her short hair has a lot of different locks that are going in different directions, which gives it a lot of movement and makes it very interesting, but it also makes lots of areas that are a little bit hard to get to with the brush. So we just need to make sure that we get a nice consistency to our paint and carefully make sure that we coat all of the hair in this Doombull Brown color. I picked Doombull Brown as a base because it's got a lot of reds in the brown. And as we paint this red hair, we need to be careful that we're using colors that um, are very neutral. So we're gonna stick with a more brown red and we're gonna stick with more brown oranges. And that's going to make the hair look like it's a natural color and not necessarily like it's supposed to be fire or something like that. Once we've got a nice coat of that Doombull Brown, we're going to begin highlighting. Our first color is going to be Squig Orange. Again, this is a really neutral orange. This is also going to be mixed with a little bit of Lamian Medium. And we're going to apply this color on most of these hair locks. We're going to mainly focus on the areas that are relatively easy for our brush to reach. Anywhere that's in a really deep recess, we're not going to bother painting. We're going to leave it that Doombull Brown color. Other than that, we're going to cover all of the hair with this Squig Orange color. Here's the hair after the Squig Orange has been applied. We're going to continue lightening the color and we're going to move in to the yellows to make it a little bit brighter. We're going to use Tau Light Ochre. As you can see, this is a more earthy brownish yellow. And instead of painting this color on all of the locks of hair, we're mainly going to be focusing on catching the highlights of where each of the hair strands would be catching the light. So we're going to be catching the top of all of these locks of hair and we're going to be accentuating the movement that's sculpted into each of them. On one side of her face, it really curls into the face to kind of accentuate that cheek. And on the other side of the face, it's being blown away from her face, almost as if she's in a little bit of wind. Here's the hair after we've applied that Tau Light Ochre color. Our next step is going to be to add a little bit of Fugan Orange shade into some of the deeper recesses of the hair. I'm not applying this color over the entire head of hair. I'm only putting it in the areas where the different strands of hair are kind of separated and parted from each other. It's going to tint all of the colors underneath it in the shadows, liven them up a little bit, and sort of blend the colors together. Here's Celestine after that Fugan Orange has been allowed to dry. I think this gives it a really nice color. It's got a very subtle orange to it, which is what we want out of red hair. Red hair is more orange than it is red. We're gonna add one final highlight just to make the hair look like it's really shining in the sun. And for that, we're gonna use Averlyn Sunset, mixed with just a little bit of Lamian Medium. We're using Averlyn Sunset because of the yellows, it is the most earthy yellow. So it's going to kind of match our subdued scheme. We're not using a lot of this color. We're really just kind of picking a few areas at the top of the crown of the hair that would be in the most sunlight to really shine and give the hair a lot of depth and vibrancy. 
We also want to make sure that we highlight this area right next to her face just because having that lighter color right next to the face is going to draw the eye toward that face and make it more of a focal point. And here is that red hair complete. And you can use this same color scheme on any model that needs red hair, like the beard of a dwarf or anything else that you're working on. And with one or two more finishing touches, St. Celestine is complete. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to see more how-to videos, I have another one where I'm going to take you through the steps of painting a basic marble base in the mini wargaming vault in the link down below in the description. If you don't already have a vault membership, go ahead and click the link. You can sign up for a seven day free trial and get access to my video as well as hundreds of other videos in the mini wargaming vault. So go ahead, click the link, start your free trial and happy wargaming.